The E53 BMW X5 was produced between 1999 and 2006, with model years ranging from the year 2000 to 2006. The car was first considered in 1994 when BMW purchased the Land Rover brand, and in 1996 the project was greenlit for designers to start working on a concept model. Several aspects of the original BMW X5 design were influenced by the Range Rover, including the split tailgate design, however BMW were clear that their first vehicle of this shape and size would not be a sports utility vehicle or SUV as had originally considered in 1994, but instead it would create a new vehicle class named the Sports Activity Vehicle or SAV. This was done to differentiate the handling characteristics of the off-road expectations of the X5 model. At the time the brand already owned Land Rover that had a strong reputation for their off-road driving capabilities. However BMW were known for their on-road driving dynamics and wanted this to remain in the BMW X5. Those that want a vehicle with the driving characteristics of a saloon with the size of an SUV were pulled towards the X5 and loved the car's ability to provide a driving experience that could be enjoyed when pushed on the road. If you're looking for a vehicle with off-road capability and don't mind having the feel of the road somewhat compromised to achieve this, then you should check out our buyer's guides for the L320 Range Rover Sport and L322 Range Rover at the end of the video. The BMW X5 is now on its fourth generation, however the original E53 is still considered one of the best. The car entered showrooms across the world in 2000 and was facelifted in 2003. The main differences are a revision to the headlights and taillights, as well as a different wheel design. Inside there was a light refresh that included different steering wheel for sport models. Paint options also changed and so if you're after a particular colour you should remember that they may only be available on the pre or post facelift model. Mechanically the refresh brought in revisions to the engines although these are light and the architecture remains broadly similar. The gearbox was changed for some engine options. First up in our buyer's guide are the common issues to the E53 X5 no matter what age you buy. This list isn't exhaustive, and so if you know any other common issues, please add them into the comments below. Rear axle bushings wear and can fail. An easy way to spot this is the less stable ride in cornering, and if the bushings have completely failed, you'll likely see the rear suspension sagging. A faulty tailgate latch is an annoying and somewhat common issue. However, repair parts can be found online, along with guides on how to repair them. Control arm bushings are known as a weak spot that wear at a faster rate due to the vehicle's weight and car-like driving dynamics, meaning that previous owners may have pushed the vehicle a little harder than they would in vehicles of this size. A clunking noise from the front is a sign that a bill is incoming. Frustratingly, door handle mechanisms can fail, and although this isn't a two-minute fix, it is within the limits of your average home mechanic. If you hear a grinding noise from the front axle, you likely have a worn drive shaft spine. These can fail entirely, and this is likely to be a workshop for repair unless you are confident working on your cars. The electrical system is shared with the E39 5 Series and suffers an array of minor faults, however few of these are major, and due to the large number of shared parts, resolutions are well known and problems can be cheap to rectify. The first BMW X5s put on sale arrived with the option of a 6-cylinder petrol or gas engine for our North American viewers, a 4.4 litre V8 was also offered and shortly after launch a 3 litre diesel 6 cylinder engine arrived in some but not all markets. First up the 3 litre inline 6 named M54 or to give it its full designation the M54 B30 producing 228 brake horsepower with an average of 22 miles to the gallon. This engine was offered for the entire life of the E53 X5 and they are an overall reliable unit with some examples having over 150,000 miles on them. Common issues are coolant leaks, which is a common trait across all engines offered on the E53 X5. Water pump and thermostat failures are one of the most common issues to look out for with the 3 litre inline 6, and so you should try and look for one that has already had these replaced with receipts to prove it. Vanos seals along with valve covers and the nut on the end of the oil pump are also areas to check. Second we have the 4.4 litre V8 dubbed M62 and in the 2000-2003 X5 is the M62 TUB44, making 282 brake horsepower and achieving an average of 21 miles to the gallon. The architecture for this engine was used in a 3.5 to 4.8 litre sizes. Stretch timing chains are the main area of concern and should be checked before they fail. The Vanos unit failure, valve cover gaskets and radiator issues are also well-known weak spots. 
However, it is the cam chain that is the cause for disaster on these engines, and so should be the top of your list for inspection. And again, if proof of replacement can be provided, then this would be a big plus to a used purchase. Engine mounts are also known to wear, and with some of these vehicles over 20 years old, they are likely worn to near failure if they've never been replaced. Initially, the 3 litre inline 6 diesel engine was offered between 2001 and 2003 with codename M57 D30, making 181 brake horsepower and averaging 29 miles to the gallon. Early models were paired with a GM 5 speed automatic, which is a notorious weak spot on the Range Rovers of this age. Although the lighter weight of the X5 reduces the stress on the unit, and so failures are not as common as in the Range Rover, they can still become problematic on the 3 litre diesel in the X5. Overall, the engine is reliable. However, cam chain stretch has been reported and turbo should last around 120,000 miles or longer depending on how hard the vehicle has been driven. Air mass sensors are also a common fault, but fortunately not an expensive repair. Before the X5 was facelifted, a 4.6 IS X5 was added to the range. These carry the M62 B46 engine, making 342 brake horsepower and averaging 19 miles to the gallon. These share a design with the 4.4 of the same age and so share common issues. You should note that these models come with larger wheels and so suspension wear is more common. The facelift E53 X5 remained with the same 3 litre inline 6 petrol engine However, revisions were made to the 4.4 V8 and 3 litre diesel. The N62 B44 received an extra 33 horsepower for a new total of 315 and averaged 21 miles to the gallon. It is known for valve stem failure along with oil leaks around the alternator gasket and failed valve cover gaskets causing an oil leak. The revised 3 litre diesel motor, now carrying the code M57 TUD30, made 215 brake horsepower and got an average of 30 miles to the gallon. It was paired with a six-speed automatic from ZF on the revised model, which is considered much more reliable. Reliability for the engine is also considered strong, but known faults on the earlier motor remained. However, they were less common, and some X5s with this engine have covered 200,000 miles with just regular maintenance. Finally, the most powerful of the E53 X5 model and the closest that this generation came to their own M model was the 4.8 IS coded N62 B48 and was available between 2004 and 2006. It produced 360 brake horsepower and averaged 21 miles to the gallon. Like the 4.6 IS, this shares a design with the 4.4 however this time the revised version, the N62 B44, and so carries the same weaknesses. Note that air ride suspension was available on a mix of different models in different markets, either as standard or optional. These can suffer airbag failure, but no more than any other vehicle with a similar system. Specification ranges around the world, but SE and Sport models are the most common. The main differences range from suspension to wheel design, with the Sport getting slightly larger wheels that allow for a better road tyre, However, if you spend a lot of your time driving on snow or in poor weather, the smaller wheels of the SE may be a better choice for their all-weather and snow tyre options. Inside, the seats and steering wheel are noticeably different between the Sport and SE trim. Options include satellite navigation, heated seats, panoramic sunroof, memory seats and leather. You will also find a manual gearbox option However, this is very rare to find on the used market. Lovers of shifting gears manually may want to seek these out as one of the last times a manual gearbox was offered in this vehicle type is with the BMW E53 X5. There are also rare options including a factory aero kit which was rarely picked from the catalogue. There was also tuning kits fitted and body kits or wheel options from popular tuners Alpina and Aishi Schnitzer. Alpina had an active participation in the 4.6 IS and 4.0 IS models. We have split our picks into two depending on budget. For those looking at the lower end, then the 3 litre straight 6 petrol is a robust engine and it will be the least likely to have lots of options that could become problematic and they are powerful enough for the chassis, although they won't get the economy of the diesel but they are also simpler to work on and so any extra paid in fuel is likely to be saved when it's at the mechanic shop. The 4.8 IS model produced between 2004 and 2006 is the one that is most likely to become a classic and a real example of BMW driver enjoyment. 
the chassis is balanced well and the power and noise are to be savoured. No, it won't be able to keep up with a modern X5M, but there are a few occasions on the road it will leave you wanting for more power. And finally, the secret BMW E53 X5. Built by BMW and fitted with a 6 litre V12 engine producing 700 brake horsepower paired to a manual gearbox. If that sounds familiar, it'll be because of the McLaren F1 and the BMW V12 LMR. The X5 Le Mans is a one of one build by the company to showcase the limits of the E53 chassis. This Skunk Works project still exists today and is shown to media or visitors to BMW as a showcase of what was truly possible with the E53 X5 chassis. We hope you've enjoyed our guide. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel for more. We also have a podcast. Just search The Miles Driven wherever you get your podcasts.